Um, the, the agenda, by the way, I think we're going to follow it pretty closely, um, if we can. So the next item, and Mohammed al Tadir, who I'm um, pleased to see, is with us, is now um, going to be given the floor. Um, he's come more or less straight from Bahrain, and he's going to give us um, a presentation which will uh, be then uh, followed by another Bahraini speaker who Saeed will introduce. And then we're going to hear from the relatives of the imprisoned um, political leaders. That'll take us up to tea time, but we'll have a chance for some question and answer um, before tea. So, um, Mohammed, over to you. Thank you, Kevin. I'm glad to be here again with my friends and colleagues. And uh, I will come on family. My experience as a detainee with my clients uh, in Allegrain military jail. Uh, 20, 26 months back, and exactly um, in a Monday, there were another reception and the familiarization day started for me. That is when uh, the Central Investigating Directorate uh, has taken me to Al Grain Military Jail. That day, the familiarization starts with an order to stand and raise your hand and face the wall for certain hours. The familiarization day starts with a group of torturer, mainly they work for the military intelligence, whom I can confirm they are uh, crossing the words nowadays with Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad, as they are, all of them working as his guard. These reach Al Grain military jail, and that night, and they have asked me to stand with my hand to the wall and without giving any uh, clue, without talking to me directly, they found out that the, the lawyer of the traitors and the traitors himself has, has been uh, a victim for the first time. They start beating me one by one everybody trying to exert as much power he can, even by going to the corner, reaching to the other corner to beat me as loud, as strong as he can. That lasts for more than 35 minutes where I collapse. Again, they thought I, I was uh, acting and they have pulled me up, they have worked walked me and start beating me until I lost my consciousness. That day, they did not say anything, but of course, inciting me with very uh, bad words. Uh, they were like in a, in, in a party where they have catched for the first time a lawyer who is representing the political figures. And because they and their uh, uh, media machine has named us as a traitors, so they have continued inciting me in that day until they told me the, these are the laws. You are here to accept rules. You are here to forget what you know. Keep your mind home, and from now on, you have to listen to our instruction. Within one day, I realized that the same group will open the cell one by one. They will start talking to one human rights defender whom I could not recognize. And again, if he tried to liberate in what they are saying, if he tried to challenge their thought, beating will start. And I remember that that man and another uh, friend who is Mahdi Abu Deeb, who was coincidentally, I was his lawyer just the day I was arrested. I, I received a call from his cousin asking him, him to, asking me to represent him. That beating which Abdul Hadi Lakhwaja get, 
I, it was, I, I never, I never uh, experienced any kind of torture. During the coming days, more aggressive than Abdul Hadi. The other, the other cell, they will start exactly uh, the, the, with, with, like they did with Abdul Hadi, speaking about uh, his thought, uh, what he did before they arrest him, when, and whenever he will answer, they will start beating. Whether they an he answer or no, they will start beating. Beating means they use all kind of, of uh, uh, hands, uh, beating, uh, sometimes with, with rubber hose. Again, they will turn to another one until I find out in the end of the day that there, that there are at least two religious figures, one teacher, one human rights defender, and another uh, political activist. Within two months, I came to know that some of these are my client. One of them is said, Muhammad Al Alawi, the second was Mahdi Abu Deeb, the third was Sheikh Abdul Jalil Al Muqdad, and for sometimes Hassan Mushaymah was in the same cell, and Muhammad Jawad Barwiz and Abdul Hadi Al Khwaja. So <laughs> we, I was in the same cell, but there is no way to see who is there unless you are very, uh, uh, you are concentrating in the dialogue between the, 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 the people who do torture and the victim. In the end, you found out that these are the political leaders whom I spent almost a month attending the interrogation with them, and I hear all the, all the, the, the kinds of torture which they have been subjected to. It has been two months, almost two months, from solo confinement, from torture. You don't know who is that unless they have received instruction to start allowing us to see each other and to speak to each other. Once the, the, the trial started, we have met in the buses, we have met in the court, and I came to know that this is Aligrain military court who was never known to the civilians before. I attended some, some, uh, some, uh, cases previously in the military court, but I haven't been through that experience where they will take you blinded, handicapped, in a very fast car, taking you from one side of Bahrain uh, in, the, in, the, in the eastern coast to the Malik military court where armed vehicle guarding you and you will be left in the sun, sometimes from 8.30 till 10 o'clock. Again, with your hand sometimes up, your face to the wall, with a very bad situation, especially for these who are old. And if you know that the, the political uh, figures and, and the, the human rights activists, most of them are in, in, more in the age of 50s and 60s. So it was a difficult time to see that kind of situation, to be in that kind of situation, and to go through all this kind of circumstances where you have been detained with people who used to be friends like Jawad Fayrouz, used to be clients like Hazan Mshema, like, like, uh, like Abdul Jalil al Sangis used to be a teacher for you as a human rights defender like Abdul Hadi, Abdul Hadi Al Khawaja, or another friend like Mahdi Abu Deeb. In August 7, I was released, and I have joined the defense committee to represent the political figures again. And again, I haven't seen a fast trial similar to this, which was, uh, which was prepared for the political figures. There is no way, and let's understand, there is no way that any criminal 
lawyer can present a perfect defense for his client if he will be allowed for five days between each session or each hearing where you were not allowed to speak and present your defense verbally so that you will clear all the points to the judge in the evidence. If you go through these, the, 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 the evidence which was submitted to the court, you will see them a clear, uh, uh, a clear, uh, a one and solo evidence that is torture, where all of them have been subjected to the similar torture which I have gained in that, uh, in that jail. And moreover, the, 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 they have been through the same treatment even though after the, the interrogation has completed. And I have attended three <coughs> times interrogation with Mishema and two times with Dr. Asangis, where sometimes the interrogation will be suspended if he show any kind of strength or resisting any of his charges. But again, whether you confessed before the, the general prosecutor or no, this evidence has been, has been taken by the military court and most of them, them has been, has, uh, have been sentenced to uh, life in jail or 15 years or five years. But after it was reversed from the Cassation Court, where they have cleared that most of these charges are not eligible to be subjected to anti-terror law. So we thought when, we have, when, when, when that case referred to the normal appeal court, civil court, we thought that this, this court Will, will follow the instruction in the Cassation Court judgment, which canceled all the charges based in the anti-terror law. But we found out that these five days of, of uh, uh, or one week time, it means that court and the government has, uh, has put a procedure where this case should finish within one month or at least one month and a half before Ramadan. And we have gone through a situation where basic and fundamental fair trials procedure were not implemented. We were, as I told you, we were not allowed to speak and, uh, verbally before the court. We were not asked to present a defense, uh, defense witness in behalf of, of uh, our clients. Moreover, we have tried to prove the torture which was reported by BCIC report and which has, who has mentioned that these political figures have been subjected to, to, to torture where all their confessions should be dropped and and, and judgment should be cancelled uh, as a result of that extraction for, for their confession. Uh, again, even the forensic doctor reports, even the consultant doctor's reports, and the similarity of uh, defenders and political figures' testimonies before the courts, and if you compare them to other uh, detainees during the martial law, you will reach a result that all these political defenders, uh, political activists and human rights defenders have been subject subjected to the same way of treatment during the martial law. And actually as a lawyer, I understand from the first day when I have entered this jail that the same systematic torture was subjected to these detainees and to these and to these detainees whom I represented early few years back. But we were shocked when the judge decided to take the case for final judgment, even though a written pleading was not submitted. As he decided in the end of the hearing, 
not to allow anybody to, pre to present his, his defense testimonies, defense witness. He did not allow to give a written bleeding. Moreover, when, when, when the figures ask their lawyers to withdraw from, uh, from representing them, they have appointed different lawyers where they were not allowed to, to read the, the case where they are not allowed to visit the, 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 the detainees and they did not submit again any defense. So it was not uh, a shocking uh, judgment where the same military judgment has been uh, uh, given again by the normal court. But what was shocking is the Cassation Court, when it liberated in the, finally in this case, they, had, they haven't changed any of these sentences given to the political uh, uh, figures. In the end, we as a human rights defenders work with the international NGOs seeking justice for detainees in Bahrain. And political leaders really case need uh, better attention where they have been subjected to ill treatment till now where most of them were not allowed to get uh, to get uh, even uh, medical attention where they were not allowed even to receive simple thing and I will leave this to the families to, liber to liberate this and in, in, in this but I would like to emphasize the the NGOs who is uh, who's here, that we need to exert more pressure in this case. And it has shown that the Bahrain government take better response if there is more pressure from its alliance, especially the British and the Americans. And we as international, uh, we as local NGOs, we seek the help for, from you to exert more pressure where where the, the, the administration here and in, in USA might uh, but in this case at least if, if they will not uh, release the, the political figures at least, at least there should be better treatment for them. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, um, Mohammed. Um, we are going to move straight on to the next speaker, and when we come to the question and answer after the um, relatives have spoken, that will be a chance also to um, engage more with, um, with some of the things that Mohammed has said, um, both as a torture survivor and as a, as a human rights defender. Um, thank you very much, um, Thank you. Thank you.